but the drilling is going to be very tight. So we've drilled now from porous to fundus. We see here what segment? labyrinthine segment and uh, so that we can drill three approaches, one through the petrous apex, one to the internal acoustic meatus, the other drill out the labyrinth and do an extended middle fossa approach. So here we've now drilled out medial to the meatus, the anterior petrosectomy approach down to the clivus and the inferior petrosal sinus. We see the ica, the sixth nerve medially, and the anterior petrosectomy approach. This is what nerve? Passes under Gruber's ligament, that's six. Fourth, third nerve. Running above it, PECOM, superior cerebellar artery, ICA. So you want to have all of these relationships. So now you can expose this area of the middle fossa through an OZ for just going to the uh, middle fossa approach to the meatus or the anterior petrosectomy, we can do a temporal craniotomy centered above the posterior root of the zygoma. We elevate the dura and here we see greater petrosal. Now when we're exposing the, the triangles in the cavernous sinus, we peel this dura backwards, but if you're peeling from front to back at the greater petrosal, it's easy to get under the nerve and a full set. So when we want to expose this area in the greater petrosal, we get in posteriorly, we elevate this dura forward, and usually that dura peels up off of the greater petrosal nerve. And in about 16% of cases, lateral to the trigeminal, we see the geniculate ganglion exposed under the dura in the floor of the middle fossa. And not only is the ganglion exposed, but you see some of the, what segment? <coughs> Labyrinthine, and here, tympanic segment exposed under the dura, so you want to be very careful in this area. If you're going to do just an approach to the internal acoustic meatus, you can often save the middle meningeal artery, which does send some blood supply to the facial nerve. Uh, but for drilling out the anterior petrosectomy, we usually need to sacrifice the middle meningeal artery. And so the two most common approaches that we take to this area are either the approach to the internal acoustic meatus, bisecting this angle between the greater petrosal and arcuate eminence that overlies the superior canal, and we begin drilling at the petrous ridge and work toward the fundus for the anterior petrosectomy, we drill medially under the trigeminal nerve down to the side of the clivus. And here we've opened the meatus working from porous to fundus. And this is what nerve? Facial, cochlear. Intermedius that could be made up as many as four bundles, superior vestibular, inferior vestibular. Okay, well everyone passes that course. And this just shows you at the fundus how close the cochlea and the vestibule are. Facial nerve, 
superior vestibular, cochlear, inferior vestibular, and this is Bill's bar, and this is transverse crest at the fundus. So the anterior petrosectomy approach, we drill medially to the porous, behind the greater petrosal nerve, the carotid, if you drill this bone, you'll find it just under the, gr the greater petrosal nerve. You drill under the superior petrosal sinus, down under the third trigeminal division to the side of the clivus along the inferior petrosal sinus. And then you open the temporal dura and divide the superior petrosal sinus uh, and then you divide the tenth. So the approach looks something like this. You open the temporal dura and elevate the temporal lobe, always taking care to preserve la bay. And then we divide the tenth, taking care to preserve the fourth nerve at the medial edge and it gives you this approach to the anterolateral brain stem. Uh, you have exposure above and below the trigeminal nerve, and it delivers you down to the side of the basilar artery. So some surgeons, if they're going to go to a low basilar bifurcation, do, do transcavernous approach through the clinoidal and oculomotor triangle, and others do an anterior petrosectomy that opens up this area between the pons and the clivus to reach a low basilar bifurcation. And what nerve is this? Six, 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 six nerve passing below Gerber's ligament. So this is just another one of these exposures. Uh, internal acoustic meatus, facial nerve, the labyrinthine segment, tympanic segment, greater petrosal nerve, the cochlea. I'll even buy three cups of coffee tomorrow <laughs> at breakfast for anyone that can expose the basal turn, the middle turn, and the apical turn of the cochlea in this cochlear angle. And now we view the approaches through the posterior fossa. Uh, just looking at porous, we see seven, eight, we see subarcuate artery, labyrinthine artery, facial nerve in the infraflocular position. Lushka. We drill off the meatus. To drill off the meatus, you usually have to sacrifice the subarcuate artery, but it ends blindly in bone. In about half the cases, the ica will loop into the porous. And here we've opened the dura. We see eight, seven, and rootlets of intermedius. The, sometimes the ica can loop all the way to the fundus. And here we're looking in from the back, and this is Bill's bar, superior vestibular, the inferior vestibular, cochlear facial and intermedius. So now if you drill lateral to the porous of the meatus, you can, if the pathology goes into the vestibule or the canals and hearing is lost, you can drill all the way lateral into the vestibule. And what is this? What is that prominence? Arcuate, and what <coughs> canal is that? Superior, and this is the canal of the posterior fossa. 
the posterior canal, the canal of the middle fossa. What did I drill into here? Common cruise, the junction of the back end of the superior canal and the up end of the posterior canal. And you can drill into it then, common cruise, or you can get into the endolymphatic sac. Here we see the hiatus, and it sets in the dura on the back of the meatus. Someone or a lot of you are going to get a piece of rubber dam into the endolymphatic sac. Sigmoid comes down, and then what turns up under the labyrinth in the infralabyrinthine position? The jugular bulb sets here so that. Here we see the hiatus of the endolymphatic sac. It sets in the dura here in the hook of the sigmoid. Uh, when you expose, if you're wanting to avoid it, why well, you can feel the endolymphatic sac. In this area, the dura, if you feel through the dura, the dura is going to get a little softer. And then this area under the labyrinth, if you drill this out, you see the jugular bulb here in the infralabyrinthine position uh, so that we've exposed the jugular ball here. It can even extend into the posterior lip of the meatus. And this is the this is A, the vestibular nerves. What nerve? Cochlear, facial, and the canals are here, and below the fundus of the meatus, the lap vestibule opens into the cochlea that sets here adjacent this lateral bend of the petrous carotid, uh, and it sets in that cochlear angle. Uh, so here we've drilled out the labyrinth, uh, and the vestibule opens below the fundus into the cochlea, and this is going to be facial, Bill's bar, superior vestibular, the inferior vestibular, and this is the singular branch of the inferior vestibular that innervates the ampulla of the posterior canal. And what canals does the superior innervate? The superior and lateral canal ampulla. And this is the oval window in which the stapy sets. So you're looking at the fundus of the right meatus Bill's bar, facial, superior vestibular, the inferior vestibular, cochlear, singular foramen for the branch of the inferior vestibular that goes to the posterior canal ampulla. And now we will review the approaches from laterally directed through the mastoid. So everyone passes that course. Course of facial nerve. A, deep to the spine.